going. It's there, see, look. It's there, but it's not doing it. It's there, it's not doing it. What is this? Huh? This is your home. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the show called again? Sketch Club. That. <laughs> Welcome back to Sketch Club Live. My name is Izzy. Next to me is my dad, Jason. And just behind us is my mom, Cindy. Tonight, we will be doing four five-minute sketches, all including the sphere. Involving right? the sphere. Involving the sphere. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Before we get started, my dad will take a few minutes to go over the basics of the sphere. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. We hope you're well. I see a lot of your beautiful faces out there. Miss Susan and Lori, Shaki and Randy. Right on. Hi, guys. Woohoo. <laughs> so this week we're going to do a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be basically the same, but we're just, well, you can tell me when we're done. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about painting from our imagination or sketching from our imagination and using our imagination when we sketch to help us out. So there's a bit of a quick lesson here to begin with. So let's jump over to the iPad and get started. And before we start sketching up tonight, exciting news. What? Exciting news? You gotta wait for it. Okay. <laughs> That's after the iPad. <laughs> All right, so if we were just sitting around with some toned paper and we put a dark on it, hmm. And then inside that dark, we put a little ball lighter than the toned paper. And then away from the edge in the light, there was a highlight. We'd have ourselves a sphere. Okay, last week, last week we spoke of how we use the value one, the value two, the invisible value three, which is the, well, here is the, the gray background and then value number four, right? So we have white, the highlight, number two value, number three value is basically everything, and then look, number three comes right between these two as well. That's gonna help soften that edge, okay? And you guys know where number four value is? Is, are, was? How shadow. was English? It's our shadow. It's our shadow. Number four. First thing we put down. Okay, so believe it or not, this is the first object that we're going to sketch tonight. And why in the world would we want to sketch a sphere? That is a good question. Well, for one thing, it is the basis of so much in art. This is a, oh, I lost his name, a painter from Sketch uh, Facebook here. I believe he's Ukrainian, somewhere from those parts of the world. Denis Gornikchi. Yeah, Cindy will put that in the, in the text there. Um, he's got some beautiful stuff, but what does this have to do with anything, Jason? Again, I'm so glad you asked. shadow right there it's just a small with the shadow right there it's used all the time oh a tree shadow right there so you're not gonna see it exactly but the sphere in art is everywhere what if you would have like a serious painter that was really like very serious his name was odd near and he had a huge studio with gigantic paintings in there well, what's he doing? Well, he's working on this piece. And what's she doing? He's using her to model for the painting. And Jason, you're just always going, well, if the thing is there and the light's coming down from there, the way you do that. Hey, it's good enough for odd near drum. You know what that is? That right there is called a light, ladies and gentlemen. He's sending it down diagonally just like we use it. We'll go deeper into that later. But 
Oops. Dang it. I need somebody to help me with my layers. <laughs> I have layer issues. <laughs> Boom. And what if we get in a little bit and see him working there? Is that a sphere? Is that a sphere? We talked about cylinders a few weeks ago, didn't we? Cylinders. So now, if we know the light's coming this way, we know how to light every cylinder and shadow every cylinder in here. And, oh my gosh. The layers, is he the layers? When are you gonna get the layers right? I thought you were my assistant, what happened? Come on. <laughs> when did I agree to that? Help, help her brother out. <laughs> here we go. All right, so we've got this here. We're gonna come over. And you see how the hair follows over the forms? The fabrics demonstrating the forms. Okay, so Everywhere, everywhere. Before we leave Mr. Odd Neardrum here at his studio, this is a lot that we're doing like with the values too. Do you see that? This be high end. Got a lot of high end here. We got gray, gray, dark. Right? You can do quite a bit with just a few tones, with just a few tones. And um, for you guys with the idea of perfection, is that what your lines look like in your drawings? Hmm? Are you guys worried about every little scratch and stuff? Eh, it's not really about that. It's about those masses, about those masses. All right, you've gone on long enough. Well, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> so, that gets us to our second image. So the first one's the sphere. The second one is Miss Millie again. But this time it's a different uh, pose. What's that, ladies and gentlemen? It's a big sphere, isn't it? And what's this? It's a cone or cylinder, excuse me, cylinder or cone. So light's coming this way. Do we have any idea where the shadow is? Yes, we do. Poor dog. Poor dog. Getting body shamed. Body shamed. <laughs> nope. Right, and then the eyes are like that. If it tucks in, we're gonna have sh shadows in there. But just so that you guys can see that I'm not just making up these light dark patterns, they're, they're following natural laws of light. The natural laws of light. Let's see, I'm not gonna be sending those to any of you. <laughs> so number two is gonna be Millie this week. Number three, I'm gonna show this in color right now, but it's gonna be in black and white. And I'm showing in color so you can see. First off, Let's get to the point. What do we got here? Where's the light coming from? Where's the shadows? Where's the cast shadows? Right, so you see how easy, and then we modify it a little bit to look more like a tree. I'm gonna treat all these as silhouettes back here. So all of that's gonna be in shadow, and then the light will be, you guys see that light? So all of this is shadow, 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 shadow. And then we have a little bit of light up here. The trees are dark, but there are a lit part, but it's still the lit of the trees is much darker than the ground and the sky. So our light shape then is our sky and the grass. So. Oh my gosh, the layers, the layers, the I layers. Almost, asked you. <laughs> almost doesn't count. Sorry. Ah, ah. Nice screen. Ah. Okay. So compositionally then, do you see how we're running? 
there. And then from here, our hill comes up. So we're all going back here. So we're going to lead them back this direction. And then we're going to walk them up the hill to our queen bee. How are we going to do that? What time are we doing? Woo! Woo! It's 7.10. Okay, we're hurrying. Are you already bored, Is? Say no. No. Good. All right. So our number four value, dark. That was a Linda. <laughs> Linda, Linda from Bob's Burgers. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Boom, that's, look, that's just an arrow pointing you back there. Yeah, it's an organic arrow, little stepping stone, and then all of our darks. Do you guys see that? And then our darks will walk across. This will be our gray, our gray, our, and actually, I'm gonna let um, this be our number two value so that our eyes want to go to all this light right here. Okay, let's see, what else we got? What else we got? Exciting, exciting. So if we're to follow the light, forget about objects. You guys see that light working its way? through there drop down a little bit here and then the lights gonna die off a little bit but look at the light in the tapestry taking us right where Do you guys see that and so with that abstractness now we're not gonna have time to do the tapestry in 15 minutes of sketching but I'm gonna look at this big line. I'm gonna set this as a counter. And then if I was working on this more, that would be the finish of that movement. But, 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 and then you know how to do a sphere. So then you just come in and you do all these things, right? Is that a circle? That's a sphere, but that's transparent. That's a sphere. Sphere, we'll go over all that. So what's the big deal about the sphere. Well, if you know a few of these common forms, you can put them together to draw anything. So with that, before we get to Sketch Club, we'd like to let you guys know that the school is open. Woo! So charcoal sketching the fundamental forms. Uh, Cindy's going to put the link in the chat room if you guys want to check it out. And um, I'm checked in, but we can't see. But if I was to resume my course, and we've got a big portion of this on free preview. So if you sign up, you'll get a bunch of stuff for free. Now, Susan was asking, you see on the left-hand side, Susan, if I go to any of these things, I can jump right there and go right to that video. I don't have to wait for the videos to end. So that's how you can work your way through. But hopefully, as you guys can see, once we get to the cube, the sphere, you're going to talk about the anatomy of it, how it's built, lighting of it. There'll be a charcoal demonstration. We'll look at the cube in art, and you'll have an assignment. Anyway, if it's of interest, check it out. And if not, then we better get sketching. Are we going to lose you? All right. Uh, what else we got? Anything? Mm -hmm. Was that a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you already look tired. I've already yawned like seven times. You've yawned seven <laughs> times? I'm glad the camera wasn't on you. That'd be embarrassing if everybody knew that you yawned. I know. Good thing you didn't announce it. Uh-huh. Let's start sketching. Let's okay. sketch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our cameras love us. All right. <laughs> okay, so the first thing up today is the sphere. And now we can do this out of our imagination if we want. 
Um, but this is kind of one of those fundamental forms you want to know how to do. When I sketch, the first thing I do size and placement with my vine charcoal by working across the form to see it in its entirety. Okay, after that, I come back with my compressed charcoal or my number four value. And now you see those lines. I want that when I'm finished to be an even number four value tone. Notice how thin my cast shadow is. So the form on the object made by the object turning away from light is a form shadow. And the one going horizontal is called a cast shadow. So try that again and try, it's harder to get that up, but try being very thin with that and accurate. That'll make a big difference. Getting the shape of that cast shadow will, will really be, uh, make a big difference in your drawing. Right? If you got two shapes kind of repeating or if it's too big, I don't want to go into the technical issues right now, but it just it, um, makes it look like it's in a very shallow space. We're about depth here, baby. This is deep. Deep, 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 deep. No, literally, part of what we're drawing is we don't want it to look two-dimensional. We want it to look three-dimensional. And that is literally depth. That third dimension is from near to far, or otherwise known as depth. Right? We're going beyond the surface. We're breaking the surface. We're going deep. Deep, 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 deep. That's my foot. <laughs> That's my foot. So I don't use a ton of line. I don't use any line. This is called mass. We're working with mass instead of line. And mass is the language of painters. And it's a little bit of a different language than line drawing. And it usually takes a little time to get used to because this isn't usually how we get through the world. It's not usually how our eyes are used to uh, telling us what's happening. So there's a little adjustment period, but after that, you're all good. So there's my last value, number one. So at this point, I have a dark shadow, I have a gray background, the vine charcoal, I have the tone of the paper that's going to read as light, and then I have the highlight. Notice how little highlight there is compared to everything else. So one of the things we want to do with these tones is make sure that there's not equal parts number four tone to number three tone, to number two tone, to number one tone, because that measure of equal parts is stagnant. We, we need to have a little variety, a little variety. So ultimately, I want that background to be a little more even, but some of that stuff takes some time. So in five minutes here, what I'm trying to do is kind of get the whole thing down. And if I can get the drawing quickly, like I can on a sphere, then I want to get all four values in there. And the reason you want to get all four of them down before you go too far is because you can't see any of them without all of them there. Or you won't see, they won't read correctly. Not that you can't see them. Obviously, you can see them, but it won't read because our eyes physically change as those different values, valued marks or how light and dark those tones are goes on the paper. So you want those down so that your eye is reacting and you're getting the true read, the true read on the white, on the tone of the paper and on the dark. So what ends up being a big deal is the space, right? Like how dark is the shadow to what kind of gray for the background? Is it a dark gray? 
a dark gray is a very, very different painting and different mood than a lighter gray background. And that's what I refer to as the space between the values. And that's how you control mood. Okay, so first five minutes, we got it down there pretty quick. We'll come back Tuesday and we'll see how, um, how what? How beautiful we can make it. Wow. Okay? Because it's not in the subject matter, it's in how you paint or draw it. Well, Millie, get off the paper. Come on. Hey, hey, get out of there. There we go. All right. She's dead asleep. She's in her happy place. <laughs> so now what I'm doing is I'm taking it another level, right? And I'm trying to see what axis her center line is on. And you see it's a slight, a slight angle. And then I'm going to draw my eyes, my nose, well, I guess I'm just working on my nose now. But basically, I'm going perpendicular across, right, as a T. And then the eyes are going to have that same angle, and the mouth's going to have that same angle. Now, you're going to see me get confused here in a minute and think that this was last week's drawing. Because this one's straight on, so it should be basically half and half. And I was thinking it was last week's drawing where it was more at an angle. And you can see now I'm cheating in on that one side. Don't worry, I catch myself in a minute. Wow, Dad. Great role model. Okay. You do what you can. You do what you can. You jealous of my hair? I can tell. No, I'm You shouldn't be jealous of no, people. No, it looks like the, what's the alien's name in Guardians of the Galaxy that has like those two things and you have two of them right here. Mantis? There we go. Don't be a hater. <laughs> no, she's the one that drives the spaceship. She's cool. I also just re did refer to you as a girl, so sorry. Yes, a female <laughs> alien, so yeah, there we go. I see sensing a theme here that we might have to talk about. Huh? Most feminine in the house? <laughs> female alien? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we need to talk about something, me and you. No. No? No. You're just going to bury that? Yes. Okay. You want me to start talking deeper and lifting weights? No. Oh, ugh. Ew. <laughs> what was that? No? I don't like that. Uh, you seem to be making fun of me. Me girly, me girly self. I thought you might like my manly self, so I didn't know. I didn't know. I just wasn't sure where all you were going there. <laughs> Those were awful. Were they awful? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, I could be teaching, but that makes you yawn, so I'm not sure what to do here. <laughs> I'm in this awkward space, kind of like being a teenager or something. <laughs> Oof. Off. Oof. Oof, oof. Oh, that scared me. So with a little more accuracy, but again, I'm using that sphere to inform how to do this. So I don't have to worry about matching what the photo does. or All I really have to worry about is how wide Right? are the ears. Is it really a sphere or is it an elongated sphere, a little bit more like an ellipse? So again, a sphere doesn't necessarily mean a perfect sphere every time. It just means that's the base from which we're working. And that allows you to simplify what you're looking at. And if you can see it simply, you can master it. Hiya! I always wanted to be a karate master, so that's what that hiya is. And I always told Izzy that I liked everything she said better if she finished with hi -ya. Hi -ya. Yep. <laughs> she never indulged me, but nope. it's still a dream of mine. Oh. Still a dream. Poor thing. So now as I work on that shadow side, I'm not just blindly doing it, but I'm thinking about proportion. Am I big enough? Is it tall enough? If, am I wide enough? But I can think about that tall, wide, big, very, very simply, right? Just based on that simple, simple sphere, right? And that's much easier than what are we looking at up there? This and this and this and that. And you're going to get a much, you'll be much <laughs> happier. Susan got Susan's it. Susan's got it. Hiya! <laughs> 
Oh, I'm sorry, people, but Susan is becoming my favorite. I don't know. I apologize. I, I mean, look, look. I mean, how is how is she not? You know Randy Camp would physically do it. Boom. I yeah, Randy. But again, first up, and not only that, it could, took me off guard. I was somewhere else, and I looked, and I thought, what is she saying? So that made it even. It was a surprise. <laughs> I love surprises. All right. Well, not really. Little surprises. <laughs> little surprises. I think we've all had enough surprises for a little while. Let's just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's going on? I keep looking at that house because I remember that. Remember your little house? Yeah. Well, the people can't see it, so uh, don't talk about things they don't know. I'm sorry. I had a little dollhouse as a girl, as most girls As did. a girl? <laughs> you, you're not a girl anymore? So we really do need to talk, as don't we? Little, what is happening? Little girl is what I meant to say. Uh, and it's in a background of my dad's uh, iPad wallpaper that I haven't seen in a long time, and I'm bringing back memories. Oh, nostalgia. <laughs> She's being overtaken by nostalgia, people. Wait, what's nostalgia? <laughs> <laughs> Just like getting lost and and uh, memories and thoughts. Yes, yeah, happy times yesterday. Oh, that's fun. The good old days. The good old days. <laughs> They're good old days because you don't remember the wind blowing and the mosquitoes biting you and the heat and all that. You just remember, oh, we were together as a family. You don't remember, oh, I was so hungry and it was so hot and. Blah, blah. So it's called nostalgia. So sometimes got in there and all the bad stuff floated out, and there's just the good nuggets left. Nice. Do you need to keep going? No. Okay. We can we can continue. Okay. So back to drawing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, once you know the basic forms, how I always start after I have the basics is with the movement, right? The movement of the whole and nothing individual. But I have the confidence to put that movement down however I need it to go if I just am absolutely 100% sure that I've got complete control over those oak trees. You never can really control anything. That is absolutely true, but you know what I'm saying, relatively speaking. Mm. Relatively speaking. But if you would rather go off into a physical... Phys philosophical conversation about what you can control and can't that'd make me very happy okay you want to do it sure it's like a lecture though not now uh. <laughs> <laughs> talk about my noises what was that noise uh, like bob Oof. Bob's burger. that's right uh, <laughs> oh is that what's happening i'm linda and you're bob um all right so by the way those hills that the trees are sitting on are what? They're partial spheres, partial spheres. So again, we know how to handle it. I know you may think, what do you mean we know how to handle it? We know, well, it's lit, when it's lit a certain way, the light shadow acts a certain thing. Mm -hmm. With certain landscape, the cast shadows are gonna follow the landscape rather than going flat across the table like the sphere. Look how Look how the things don't go flat, they go up. Let me, I'll ask, hey, so did you snort again? No, I, I, I did a, mm. Oh yeah, she, it was more of a- It was like a growl. It was like, mm, mm. But yeah. she doesn't have the growl, she just has the, mm. So it's almost like a hum. It's, it's a, a, a very negative, I'm disappointed hum. Right, so that's, that's what you missed. You want to try it into the microphone so that people can hear uh, it? I, I, one more thing. I, I think. No, it. it's Dad, more like a lecture. Dad has to say something, not like repeatedly. It has to be on the spot. Dad says something that makes me bored. I'm going to make a noise. <laughs> sounded like a snort to me. Wow. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Sound like there you go. We'll call it a snort. <laughs> As an Izzy Ort. Izzy Ort. All right. No. Ew. So again, I'm trying before I go too dark or anything anywhere. I'm getting everything on there. I I want to see all my piece as a whole. Simply, see the whole thing simply, before I start committing. Okay. And I know five minutes. I'm not going to get very far. 
So if all I get to do is kind of indicate these big things, well, I got Tuesday on my mind. Oh, nope. Not anymore, I don't. Right now, I have Thursday on my mind. Because this one will come back Thursday, not Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> got it. So that, that was almost a bored disappointment, but that was that, oh. So there's kind of a spectrum, kind of like there is on values with Izzy. It can be from like, eh, uh, whatever, Dad, to, uh, mm, I'm really disappointed and almost angry and everything in between. So it's a, it's a tonal thing, tonal thing. Did you know in some languages, like the same sounds can mean like several different things depending on the tone you say it with? Izzy, Izzy. No, if you were really mad at me, you would say, Isabella. <laughs> I know, but you forbid me to say that, so I try not to say it when I'm on camera. Oh. But I do appreciate you saying it, because I love that name. Thank you. I do, too. Does that look like spheres to you guys? Rough enough, huh? Rough enough. Okay, is that your foot, or is it someone, like, pounding at the door? Oh. It's the future. It's the future. Five minutes goes fast. Dang. Five minutes goes fast, especially when we're working out all Izzy's issues on the side, you know? Oh. Take some time. That's sad. Okay, so I need to lighten this up. This is coming off really dark, but I almost like it better like this. Do you guys see why? Do you see how easy it is to separate the light from the dark there? And although there is some light and shadow, we've got black grapes or dark grapes along with the green grapes which are lighter grapes that go with the green pear so learn to see those big abstract light dark because you can't do a grape you can't do a tapestry you can't do a stem not with charcoal not with chalk but you can do a dark you can do a light so let's start with what we can and grow from there I feel like I need like sound effect. That's like a motivational speaker. Oh. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, seriously, is that your foot? Seriously, hey, I motivated you. You are being very demotivating. Okay. Look how you're distracting from the show. It, it, it is my foot. I told you it's my foot. We will talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> uh, it sounds like Indiana Jones drums, and so that's why I'm like, are we gonna get stuck in Jumanji? Like, I gotta. Like, well, if we do, we'll be we'll be uh. On film, so that would be cool. Right, and if you get into this, this is kind of, this is a different world. Each one of these is a completely different world. Yep, a different world. So you see, I'm using the vine charcoal to kind of just space things out and s see the wholeness of them, without committing. But I'm spacing. The key is what I am spacing. I'm spacing the light and the dark not the objects does that make sense sometimes certain objects are part of the light sometimes certain objects are part of the dark sometimes like the pair the shadows part of the dark and the lights part of the light it can be both and the reason we want to look at the light dark pattern instead of objects is the light dark pattern can literally literally Literally, la 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 la, with lots of syllables. Nice. Um, transcend the objects. What does transcend mean? It means go beyond. And so, in other words, we're not going to have shapes limited to and locked up into their own little yards and fences. But the value, the dark, will transcend the object into other objects and into background and um, that's when your paintings start looking larger that's what gives the feeling of largeness to a work it really has nothing to do with the size of the canvas right but it's it's the unifying of those light dark those those light shapes the dark shapes of the gray shapes and that there's a pattern of unequal value of unequal measure. When are you going to learn this stuff so I can take a break? I am exhausted. I've been talking like this whole time. I know. 
<laughs> you got down and brought it. <laughs> did it come up how I wanted it to come up? Yes, it did, because I saw that look in your eyes right after you said it. That little sparkle. <laughs> I saw the sparkle in your eyes. All right. So, guys, can you see how that dark that is playing the shadow of the sphere part of the pair is a single shape with the cast shadow? And then it goes into the dark. Uh, that's actually status there, but it's going to be dark purple flowers. Right? And then we want to try to tie that into those dark grapes somehow. So that instead of a pear, a flower, grapes, we have one big, in interesting, meandering dark shape. Right? Notice how those cast shadows are going in slightly different and they break up that shape. Right? Makes it long. The stems, what are the stems? And they're just nice endings. We're going for these big blobs. So bye, see you later. Waving down the street as you're driving off. Bye. You took the wrong road. Go come back. Oh, okay. I'll re see, I had to redo my stem there. So I was so busy waving by that, doom, we, oops, took the wrong road. Okay, really see you this time. Bye. <laughs> so the light grape. And then the dark grapes will be cast shadows. And look how those cast shadows can really bring all of those objects together. And even a cast shadow and a little detritus there. And boom, all of a sudden, rather than being a mark, it's something sitting on a table. It is a lifestyle. Oh, you want, you want a lifestyle, not just a mark? All right, well, yeah, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, I like that. You're welcome. I like that. So, how do you like this new look of me? <laughs> Handsome. Yeah, I've been called an egghead before, but never a pear head. <laughs> so, there we go. Glad that that's over, huh? <laughs> Whew, that was a bad joke. <laughs> All right. How did everybody do tonight? Were you warmed up? Were you asleep after that intro or what? Did it help out? Let us know. All right. Put your stuff down and let's have a look at the rewind. Okay, size and placement, number four value, number three value, number two value with the needed eraser. By the way, the course that we shared with you, it has, it has a, I have a video, a 15 minute video all on the workflow where I just walk you right through the workflow. So anybody in the classes, hop on there and check those previews out. We, I go through the materials, where you can get them, what you do with them, all of that. But I'm hoping you guys are able to start seeing how I'm using the idea of sphere to draw from my imagination and to use my imagination to help me draw from reference. All that. Aw, you are welcome. Thank you for the good times. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thank you for the good times. Okay, so again, when I'm doing my size and placement, I'm thinking more about my value patterns than my object. Where do I want that dark running across? Oh, I guess that's all I get to say. Hmm. That's all you get to say. I feel sad. Pause. That's good. I was tired anyway. We'll talk about that another time. So, um. That's the link again for the school. The link for the school. Can we go to school real quick? No. Can we go to school real quick? We left the wrong one. There the wrong is. school? No. <laughs> what? So let's see as an enrolled student. So an enrolled student, again, this is the whole course over here. A good part of these up through the cube, actually most of it, is a free preview. So you can get all of those. Anatomy and lighting of the cube, demonstration of the cube and charcoal, cube and art. So you got an 11 minute video, a 16 minute video, an eight minute video and then an assignment. Here's our workflow. Look, there's a whole 14 minute video on workflow here. Wow. Hey, if you've seen this a few times and you just need to refresh, you can come over here to the gearbox. You can hit two times and this thing will run through two times the speed. If that's not fast enough for you, grab the thing and scroll through. Look at that camera work. 
It's actually <laughs> editing work. Nice, huh? Wow. Nice. We go through each step, tell you exactly what we're doing, and then we pull it all together. You In all under 14 minutes, Ooh. you can also slow it down. Right? So we hope you guys can check that out. Uh, Cindy's got the link in there. And uh, boom. There it is. What Have about fun. Our special. our special. We are so special that we literally just opened this up. It was late last night. So the first 25 people that want to get this course, it's $25. It's not much money. You get a 20% 20, 20 discount code. What's the code, Mom? It is first25. First25. So it's in the link. So it's in, in the, the link, link right there. And it only be you. It's only, there's only 25 of them. So after 25 are used, um, it goes back up. So uh, be a be a trendsetter. Be a trendsetter. Join us. Spread the word. There you go. You'll hear more about that in the future. But uh, thank you guys. Let's see. We need to go there. Yeah. All right. That'll wrap us up. Uh, we got a busy week. A new class starting in the morning. Yeah. If you're interested in joining us, always sign up. Uh, the rest of you guys will see you at 9 a.m. Uh, tomorrow night, Masterworks on YouTube, 7 o'clock. Tuesday night, back for Sketch Club right here. And we'll do two 10 minutes on the Sphere and Millie. Uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, and Thursday morning, morning jump start on YouTube at 8 a.m. And in the evening, it is either Sketch Club or Masterworks. So join us, join us, join us. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.